We are the beer amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the beer amigos. We are the beer amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the beer amigos. The beer amigos. Hey, this is Travis. And this is Mike. And we are the, the Beer Amigos! Recording live from the 9th Annual Blue Point Cascals Festival, located in Patchogue, New York. It is Saturday, April 13, 2013! And we're here to drink some beers, record some episode, and just get it on! <laughs> and before we get started, we want to let all you know that as part of Long Island Craft Beer Week on May 15th, the Beer Amigos will be refereeing the Long Island Craft Beer Pong Tournament at Jackson. Restaurant on Jericho Turnpike in Comac around 7 p.m. Greg Martin of Long Ireland is going to be there, right, Greg? Go to the bathroom. Right. Joe Churchy of Starfish Junction is going to be there, right, Joe? Hell yeah. All right, so let's get started, Mike. All right, let's get it in. <laughs> We are here at the Blue Point Cask Ales Festival on this glorious Saturday, the 13th of April, 2013. Sorry, WrestleMania just happened. We're here with Matt and Laurie Spitz of the upcoming Butte Mustache Brewing Company. Guys, how are you doing today? Uh, we're pre-festival now. It's a little quiet, which is, you know, the calm before the storm. It's a beautiful day. But uh, let's hear what the Spitz have to say. The Spitzes have to say. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Hey guys, how are you? We are doing. Lori and then Matt. No, no, joking. <laughs> Why won't you let me talk, Mike? Come on. All right. Hi. <laughs> that's all. That's all he wanted to do. He just, right, he just wanted that second. <laughs> so um, we've. You know, we had a segment where you discussed, you know, your brewery and, and you know, the funding Kickstarter-wise a while ago. And uh, it's nice to reconnect with you, although we see you regularly. We don't necessarily always discuss this because I know that it's you're... Business. Yeah, it's not... It's it's mostly pleasure, sometimes business. But I know you get inundated with a lot of that, so I try to respect the fact that you don't want to always talk about this. Thank you. But we're at, you know, we're at an event, so we're going to talk about and it. You have no choice. Beer is happening all around us. Now we have to get out of it. So we, yeah. we cornered them into a porta potty, <laughs> not even the handicap sized one, <laughs> the regular. I'd like to comment though, we are in the women's only porta potty right now, so it's a little bit cleaner than the yeah. men's. Yeah, these porta-potty. smell a lot different than the guys. We didn't pre sanitize though, but, it, it, <laughs> but they this did. This one's fresh. The toilet paper hasn't even been opened yet. <laughs> yeah. It smells uh, like almonds. That's always a good thing. Like, I mean, I remember when I went to Bonnaroo. I mean, we're going to get the beer eventually here, but I remember when I went to Bonnaroo and like you would hear the cesspool trucks in the morning and you were like, yes, and you would like get out of your tent and run like hell to get. <laughs> Like into the toilet while it was clean, and you you found great satisfaction in that freshly wrapped toilet paper where you were like, "All right, like I know that no one has treaded on this ground before. I'm staking my claim, and that's that." Sorry, right, this, stop- this might be the first beer podcast to ever talk about toilet paper. We're gonna stop talking about you know excretion and, <laughs> and start talking about yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's inevitably gonna happen at some point today. Um, but most importantly, let's get back to your brewery love child uh, and and tell us about that and where you are right now so I'm gonna let the spitzes do some talking and I'm gonna shut up okay so uh, right now we are just uh, in limbo this is so close to my face it's uncomfortable it has to be sorry <laughs> well, we are in a porta potty so. <laughs> I know everything's so close to my face right now it's really awkward um, so right now we are um, we're just in the licensing process, which is uh, going to probably be about another six months, fingers crossed. Everything's in, submitted, and we're just, there's really nothing else we can do at the moment. Um, waiting on building permits and liquor, you know, brewer's notice and state liquor authority approval. Um, it just takes a while, and we're not really too sure with all the sequestration that's going on if that's going to slow things down or not. Hoping that we hear, you know, we get things together by the fall. So we're hoping for the fall. No promises. Um, if it's going to go into 2014, though, I'm going to cry. So. Do you have all your hardware, fermenters, everything in place already? Um, we don't yet. We haven't ordered our brew house yet. Um, we do have fermenters. They are not at the brewery yet, but um, 
we got a good deal on some used ones. So, yeah. At this point, it's been a lot of, of hurry up and wait. You know, it kind of, all right, let's get this, 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 this. Okay, now we'll hear from you in a month or two or six, you know. Um, you know, so that's kind of where we're at now. Have you found this as a good opportunity to, to maybe hone some of your recipes or even, you know, expand what your, your potential, you know, like line and, and flagship beers are going to be? Um, yeah. Are you using this time for your, to your benefit, <laughs> yeah. essentially? I mean, so right now we've been just brewing uh, every weekend and, um, you know, just refining all the recipes, playing with some other recipes that we haven't had a chance to try because we've been up to our ears and paperwork. Um, so, yeah, we're basically brewing and looking for money from investors. So those are the two things that we're doing right now. Do you feel I, – I know that you, you both maybe independently actually brewed beers for today's event – um, perhaps you could, you know, elaborate on what you, you had your hand in and uh, if you had brewed anything, you know, similar to this in the past. Sure. Um, I made a black IPA with, with our friend Sean Clancy. And um, it was actually kind of cool because we, we didn't have the opportunity to get together and brew at the same time. So he did his five-gallon batch, I did my five-gallon batch, and then we just combined them in the cask, which I thought was kind of cool. So it's really like a true collaboration, you know? <laughs> Do you, um, do you think this is a mere coincidence that this happened the year that the Postal Service celebrated their 10-year anniversary of an album that was made in the same regard, you know, two separate entities working on it in two separate places and then merging it together? Is it just an alignment of the stars or is this just, you know, just like a mere coincidence? Or do you have no idea what Mike's even talking about? I have no clue what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just pumped. <laughs> Mike, Mike, let's stick to the porta potties and beer, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And... Lori had her hand in something as well. So yes, um, Tim Saliani and I uh, brewed a, um, a white Russian milk stout um, based after our favorite movie, The Big Lebowski. So it's called The Little Lebowski, Urban Achiever. And, and you uh, have to yell a bite when you drink. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. If you, we actually also have another not here, but we had brewed a bigger imperial version of the same beer, and it's it's called the Dude Stout. Um, toyed with calling it a bite, but. Uh, definitely find us running around today in our Lebowski and Achiever shirts. That nice. I, have I don't know if you can see, it's kind of dark in the porter potty, but... <laughs> it actually smells like a milk stout in here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, so that'll be um, tapped over at the... LA, both of Matt and I's beers will be over at the uh, LIBME table. Great. Great. So, um, obviously, we look forward to things in the hopefully near future regarding the Mustache Brewing Company, but I know that um, you guys have set up a beer defects class, two of them actually, um, one at the Hoptron Boutique in Patchogue and the other at the Black Sheep Ale House in Mineola. Mineola. Um, tell us a little bit about how that came to fruition and your intent behind it. So um, Matt and I have actually been, you know, working on just in our kind of downtime, also been doing a lot of like honing up on different beer things. Um, I'm actually working on my Cicerone certification at the same time, and part, a huge part of that is being able to identify beer defects. So I really wanted to, um, when we were at the Craft Brewers Conference uh, two weeks ago, I was at the Seibel Institute booth, Seibel, Sable, I can never figure out how to say it, and um, they actually have a beer defects kit, but kind of costs a lot of money, so I wanted to get a bunch of people together to justify getting this, and it just, I threw it out there, and everybody, I had like 40 people who wanted to do it, so... You know, one thing we're going to be doing with the brewery once we're up and running is teaching a lot of classes, home brewing, different, you know, style classes. So we thought this was a good opportunity um, to do this now. So we're going to be going over um, six of the most common beer defects um, found in home brews. So it's a great class for home brewers, anyone doing BJCP, Cicerones, anybody who just wants to have a better knowledge of what they're drinking and if there's a problem. Um, we're going to we're going to taste them. We're going to talk about what causes them, how to prevent them, and you know if there's a way to fix them in your beer, how to fix them. So really excited. Uh, class is actually almost sold out, but if you go on our Facebook page, there's some seats, a couple seats left, I think, um, so you could register. It's on Eventbrite. And where are you guys getting this defective beer from for everyone's taste? Well, with the um, how the kits work is is they're small vials that um, is enough enough of the whatever infected compound or defective compound to inoculate about a liter of beer. 
So you take a, a neutral kind of tasting beer, usually Bud Light or Bud or whatever, and then you put this the defect in it. And then, so you can really get a pure sense of what the defect is all about. We just want to say this is the only time that we'll condone drinking either of those aforementioned beers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, tickets for that are available on Eventbrite? Yes. Um, if you just look up, the class is titled Bad Beer. So if you just look up Bad Beer on Eventbrite, I believe it is the only two classes called a Bad Beer that will come up. Great. And again, what, what are those dates again? Uh, it's Tuesday, May 21st at Hoptron Boutique in Patchogue, and then Tuesday, May 28th, the week after, at Black Sheep Ale House in Minneola. 28th, probably. 28th. What did I say? We said no. The Tuesday after the 21st would probably be the 28th. I have no idea what's Is going Matt, on. Is Matt doing the accounting for mustache? <laughs> Actually, no. No. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so very much. It's always great talking to you. Uh, we'll see you very soon. And hopefully next time we talk to you, we'll be in Mustache Brewing Company drinking your beer. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Now let's get out of this I porta thought, potty. Yeah. We are here... With Evan from the Barrier Brewing Company, he is presently in front of us. We're super grateful that he's here with us at the Blue Point Cascales Festival. Today, you poured your Oil City IPA. and yeah IPA, and also your American Pale Ale. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. I actually, uh, prior to talking about that, put that American Pale Ale in my top three today for sure, without a doubt. So uh, give us some insight as to how you came about bringing those today and uh, what, you know, what brought you to put Peaches and Simcoe in that. So. Okay, well, the Bittersweet Pale Ale, it's one of like two American Pale Ales we do. One's a green room, um, which is a little more toasty, a little more floral. Uh, this guy uh, tends to be a little more uh, round, I guess, is a, somewhat, it's a word I've been using a little bit. It's kind of a little more well-balanced. Um, not as bitter as the green room, but it's a lot more citrusy. Uh, borderline IPA, but without the bitterness. Um, really citrusy, uh, some New Zealand hops, and with our casks, we've kind of been having some fun. We kind of uh, tend to use like fruit or syrup, like a maple syrup or molasses. Um, this one happened to be peaches. It's kind of a nice fermentable sugar. Uh, it also gives it some some peach flavor. Um, we use a cold yeast for that beer as well, which also gives like a peach ester, um, peach pear. Esther from the yeast, and uh, so kind of just plays off that. And um, you know, Simcoe, it's another hop we use in that beer as well. So kind of just you know have some fun with with the beer and see what happens. So any anytime we anytime we use like a fruit like that, it's always kind of a kind of a risk because you never know. You know, you're handling the fruit. There's a lot of like there's different yeast strains on that on that fruit to begin with. So. Anytime it comes out good, we're always happy. And this one came out pretty nice. Yeah, You're like, the, the outcome is a crapshoot, because, like, I don't know what's going to be the end result. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, super, like, super glad that you're here, you know. We've had your beers where, like, you've had, you know, people representing your brewery. Um, but it's always nice to have a beer, you know, provided and poured by the brewer. Um, it's great that we're here at the Blue Point Brewery because recently, unfortunately, you guys had some, you know, troubling events with the with the super storm Sandy, yeah. and uh, the Sandy Relief beer was actually brewed where we're standing presently, not at this spot, but at this facility, and um, that's got to be kind of cool to, to, for that to come full circle and you guys be back on your feet and brewing in your own facility, you know, all systems go. So maybe you could provide us, you know. Unfortunately, a little bit tragic how you guys overcame that and where you are today. Right. Well, yeah, we're, um, you know, we've said it a, a few times, many times, that we're really, we're floored by the, the like, the local outreach that we got from everyone, um, you know, when we were kind of hit by the storm. Uh, but, yeah, we're happy to be brewing again, putting everything behind us. Um, and we really wanted to make it a point to come back out here and uh, kind of just, you know, be pouring beers that we brewed since the storm here and uh you know and we're looking to grow as a business too as, as a brewery and we you know we realize we sell most of our beer in in the city in the boroughs and uh you know we want to kind of obviously continue to do that but also kind of get more of a presence on the island i feel like a lot of people you know don't know who we are still and we've been around for three years so that's our fault and uh we're trying to turn that around so we wanted to 
kind of make this a jumping off point for that and just you know we're a Long Island brewery we should have a little more a little more presence on, on Long Island I like knowing that every time I go to Jimmy's number 43 I can expect a, a barrier beer on tap yeah oh well, yeah Jimmy's is a great great guy Jimmy's a great guy and they pour a lot of our beer um, we do catch it a lot at barbecue I've had the oil city at barbecue yep. this is my question the unimperial IPA yep. one of the most full-bodied Unimperial IPAs ever had. Okay. It's truly an unimperial IPA. It is four um, percent, high mash temperature, low fermentation temperature. Um, it's kind of kind of kind of keeps a lot of its full body. Some we use some dex, a good amount of dextrin malt, um, and some really full bodied like two row two row uh, two UK four malted barley. It's, it's truly hard to believe, but I. Uh, I don't know if you've had a mic, but I... Had a barbecue, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. For an unimperial IPA, it's phenomenal, that's phenomenal. What we, that's what we wanted. Really, like, the hop, the hop bill of, like, a, just a normal IPA and, uh, you know, in the body of a right, really nice, sessionable, you know, easy drinker that, that uh, you'll have a problem getting drunk off of, yeah. which, is, <laughs> which is what we like. I mean, a lot of our beers are below 7%. Right, so, right. you know, and that's kind of our... Not, I shouldn't say our philosophy, but... You know, we like sampling a lot of different beers throughout the night. We don't tend to brew beers that you can have, uh, you know, a pint of it and you're done for the night. Even though I have a pint of Unimperial and I'll be probably <laughs> vomiting in the corner because I'll be wasted. Yeah. But especially me at one, especially me at uh, 135 pounds. Sadly, <laughs> the, these guys have an expansive roster. If you check out their website, you'll be floored actually about how many brews, like how many actual beers they, you know, are producing at any given time, uh, which is a great thing. You know, you switch it up. Uh, offer you quite an array of things, and so, they got the hopped lemonade. Yeah, it, absolutely. And I'm like limeade. I'm like, I want to yeah. go to there. <laughs> so hopefully, Travis and I can can definitely make a trip out there and visit you guys, and maybe get get the tour and have like you know a little bit more thorough of an interview and, and get some insight yeah. as to what you guys have going on. I know that I'm looking forward to, to more of your beers heading out east uh, and hopefully seeing more of you guys. Um, that aside, you recently bottled one of your first beers. Um, so maybe you can tell us about that experience and, and kind of the reception you received about that. Yeah. Um, well, the first un unofficial, we'd love to have you guys down anytime you want to come down. Um, we just set it up and love to make that happen. Um, Since we're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anytime. They uh, do exist. <laughs> or do we? We, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the first bottle release, which is like an unofficial, was a submersion double IPA that kind of survived the storm in the tank. Came out really nice, uh, but our, the first official bottle, whatever official means, we're um, <laughs> we're going to be releasing that wholesale. We we did a bottle release like two weeks ago with the brewery. Um, it's an imperial. We're calling it like an imperial pale ale. Um, it's kind of it's borderline barley wine as well. It's going to turn into like more of a barley wine, like a, a hoppy American barley wine. Uh, it's all Zythos hopped, um, 10 percent. Um, it's really full bodied. Some like really nice caramel toffee uh, flavors from the from the malt, and then just really nice like floral citrus notes from those Zythos hops that we used. Um, it's really you know that's we with the the, the way the brewery is built. It's such a small system that it's, the tanks are such the brew house tanks are such that basically we had to brew six batches, six mashes of this beer to make enough to bottle it. So. So we every time we brewed it, we, we double mashed, sent it into one tank. Basically, every every mash yields us three barrels of beer. So uh, two mashes a day over the course of like a month, basically, you know, filled up one fermenter. I'm, I'm not explaining it well because I'm fucking I'm I'm drunk, but two mashes per fermenter. Fermented the batch, transferred it to our 15 barrel bright. So we did that three times. And then we yielded enough to bottle it, and then Trent and many other processes, but uh, for, uh, primed it, bottle. <laughs> it all sounds good to us. I promise. Tail end of the day. Tail end of the <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah, we uh, bottle conditioned it with honey, and uh, it came out pretty nice. Have you guys had it? I'm no, I, I haven't, unfortunately. Okay. But um, we. I, I was actually at the original brewery in Oceanside, the first location. Okay. I've not been to the second location. I don't know. I don't know about Mike, I but haven't, I haven't. But we definitely need to go out there. Yeah. We just set up a hot date with the guys at Barrier and uh, <laughs> break bread and drink some beers yeah, for sure. We got some bottles there, obviously. But uh, and we always got between ten and fifteen beers on tap. We got the the hop lemonades, yeah. hop limeades. 
So just having having fun. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Evan. Uh, where exactly are you located in Oceanside? Three thousand one New Street, Unit A two, Oceanside, New York. Keep an eye out for their stuff on tap, and uh, be sure to order it if you see it. Thanks again. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We are here with the Rick Sabatka of the Great South Bay Brewery. Rick, we primarily want to know, A, what you poured today and, and how that reception was. I know it, at this point it was good enough where you kicked pretty early, um, but I kind of want to know about the Bay Fest that you guys have planned for, your, uh, for the Long Island Craft Beer Week. If you could give us some insight into that, it would be appreciated. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mike. Yes, we had a, a wonderful time at the uh, Cascal Fest at Blue Point Brewery. We served a massive IPA in our blood orange, fresh squeezed cask ale. Um, it was a good reception. We uh, kicked both of them very fast. And uh, with that, I have my good friend here, Mike Napolitano here. Ah, thank you. For the Long Island Beer Malt Enthusiasts. Yes. From Long Island Beer Malt Enthusiasts. In the house. Uh, what up, yo? <laughs> my personal consultant on everything I do. <laughs> Basically, oh, and, uh, you, you, from here, we've had a great festival, always at the Blue Point Cascal Festival. And uh, in a few weeks, we are uh, heading to the Bay Fest. Bay Fest is the first inaugural beer fest for Great South Bay Brewery. We're holding it at our brewery. We have about 21 breweries signed up. And with that, we are going to kick in action our 30-barrel brewery, brand-new system, never been brewed on before, first release beer at the Bayfest. Is it going to be a new beer you've never debuted, debuted before? New beer? Absolutely. We are wow. brewing a beer we've never brewed before. It's going to be a... Uh, you look tempted to tell us what that beer is. Well, I'm a little tempted. We have a, a bit of a malt and hops and a lot of yeast and water going into that beer. <laughs> 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 the general recipe, but we have something special planned. And we're not releasing it until the Bay Fest. The reason being is because... You know, we love to hold our fans and supporters and uh, Bayfest entrance uh, in suspense, but it's going to be a pretty incredible beer. Only for the Bayfest, we will not distribute or sell anywhere else. It's kind of like Mike. A lot of the girls come up to him and say, Mike, are you single? He doesn't give him the answer. He says, you have to kiss me to find out. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I play my cards close to my chest like Rick over here. You know, you don't want to give too much insight. You know, you got to leave some, some uh, mystery there. And, and that's appreciated because now everyone's like, what are they going to serve? I don't know. Now I have to go. I better buy a ticket before it sells out because that's very much a possibility. Um, from what I've seen on Facebook, uh, the Bay Fest has received a great, um, some great attention. And, and, you know, people are buying up tickets. So get Get them while they are available because once they're gone, they're not going to be available at the door. <laughs> and what day is that? And what time is Bayfest? The day is Saturday, May 11th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We actually are about 10 tickets, 10 tickets away from selling out from our original Sweet. plan. So um, we sold out very quick, which we did not anticipate. So my uh, organizer starfish junction whom we dearly love has uh basically agreed to host a bigger number of people so we're we're looking at a bigger number of people we're going to open up a, a lot more tickets to people uh who couldn't get the tickets and it's going to be a huge bay fest so 21 breweries we have our local Long Island, Long Island Beer Mall enthusiast, who I'm here with Mike Napolitano. Mike Napolitano, what up, what up, Mr. Rick? <laughs> One of the best brewers I know, unprofessional yet, could seriously make a professional level at the beer he brews, is going to be here with a special beer for sure. And with that, 21 other breweries ranging from Long Island breweries to Brooklyn. Now we just added uh, Wandering Star and 508 Brewery in New York City. Nice. Um, it's going to be sensational. We have music. We have barbecue. We have beer Ho enthusiasts. And hopefully the beer amigos. The beer amigos, <laughs> yes. We have uh, hopefully have them a special lounge for these guys to uh, juice, broadcast <laughs> and bring us the specialness to Long Island beer. And that's what it is. That's what it's all about is bringing Long Island beer together and uh, making the, the big craft beer hub of Long Island 
so that uh, the rest of the states can appreciate us and bring attention to us because we know what's going on and we want you to drink it for sure. People helping people. It's powerful stuff. Um, look for those tickets. They're available in limited av- availability at this point, but get them before it sells out. We look forward to seeing you there. I know Rick Sabaka will be there with a smiling face. Thanks so much for your time, and, and always listen to Beer Amigos. It's a pleasure. I love the Beer Amigos. I love Long Island beer. and uh, I love gonna... Mike Napolitano. Mike yeah! Napolitano. Yeah! Thank you. He's the man, the myth. Oh, great South Bay. You really make my day Your tasty, tasty beers They give me such cheer So now I sing to you A song about your bruise Oh, great South Bay You really make my day I want your snaggle tooth stout Inside of my mouth For a pint of your massive IPA Even $500 I would pay Your Robert Moses Pale Ale It alone would set my boat a sail I want your blonde ambition While my wife is in the kitchen Cooking Cause we all know a woman's place is in the kitchen, right? I'm kidding I'm kidding! Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Your tasty, tasty beers, they give me such cheer. So now I sing to you a song about your bruise. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Your tasty, tasty beers, they give me such cheer. So now I sing to you a song about your brews. Oh, great South Bay, you really make my day. Oh, great South Bay. Really make my day. This is Mike from Empire Brewing Company. I'm here with the Beer Amigos at the Blue Point Cast Festival. We are here with the gentleman from Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. Um, always a fan of your beers and your company. Um, we've done a few uh, sessions at the Coliseum where we've discussed different things, but um, here we are with John and Rich and Christian. Um, not drinking one of your beers yet. I have the other side IPA. But let's talk about the other side IPA, which was recently received some accolades. Um, let's talk about how that came into fruition. Are you guys even brewing that beer? Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit how that how that happened. Yeah, it was. Uh, so that beer was. Uh, so basically, our initial IPA was Disorient IPA. If you remember that, um, we, uh, due to several legal issues with the state liquor authority, couldn't secure that name Disorient, even though it was clearly named after Orient, which was the town over from Greenport. Directly adjacent. Directly adjacent. They didn't buy that, so we, rather than going to a dedicated IPA, did an IPA series. And other side was our West Coast style IPA. So really full. Hops, pretty aggressively hopped. Um, awesome beer. We all loved it when it, you know, released. Um, and then when it came back to release again this year, we kind of decided to release it as our full-time IPA. And in conjunction with that, we entered the blind IPA tasting at, at in Brooklyn. Is it uh, Mugs Ale House, right? Mugs Ale House uh, against like uh, Lagunitas, uh, uh, Dogfish Head, Six Point, Blue Point. A bunch of breweries, great breweries uh, that we love, and we ended up winning. So we felt a little like we kind of, we, we, we knew what was going on, you know, for once where uh, we actually introduced that beer ahead of it winning um, a, a blind taste test. So we were pretty happy. But that's how that beer kind of came into existence on a full-time basis. It's now our full-time idea. Basically, it was my idea. <laughs> well, I mean, that's got to feel good. I mean, again, judged by, by local people. 
I know that um, at Martha Clara one year, Leaf Pile had, had you know been recognized and subsequently was able to be released in, in restaurants across Long Island, um, which, which is a nice thing. Um, that being said, we do love everything you pretty much make, and I know that Trav recently um, attended the Jackson's um, beer dinner where um, your beers were paired with certain foods, and he had a great time. Trev, maybe you could elaborate on that a little bit um, to share that with our, our listeners because you did kind of post photos like course to course yeah. as, as to what you're eating. My one question, which I didn't get an answer to, is who actually chooses what beer is paired with what meal at your beer you know, dinners? You know, we always work with the restaurant to come up with the... the Basically, any beer that is in rotation at that point is up for the beer dinner that is, you know, during that time period. And we'll work with the chef and, like, decide what the right beer is for what he's thinking. You know, I mean, I think the cool thing about beer right now is that people are, are starting to imagine it like uh, wine, where it is, you know, certain beers go with certain foods, and there's a lot more thought that goes into it. And we feel like to just kind of push beers onto a restaurant is crazy when you have, you know, these great restaurants that are making amazing food and really, like, working with them to get to the menu of what they're making and get to the, you know, the beer menu is the, is the best way to go. Now, do you guys simply read the menu, or does someone and say, like, Justin, go down to the place, taste the food, and decipher, yes, it will go well with this, you know, dish. Well, you know, we'll, there's a lot of trust involved, so we, we will try and get the chef the, the beer in, you know, 99% of the time so they can kind of get a sense of where that beer is going and what type of foods he makes pairs well. Um, but, yeah, no, we don't require that we taste the food ahead of right, right. it being on the menu. We, we like, you know, usually, you know, thankfully are um, associated with really good restaurants and great chefs. And uh, we've been very lucky to have some pretty amazing beer dinners, which we, you were a part of. The beer dinner was absolutely incredible. And, Mike, I think Mike was a little jealous. And I had the opportunity to head down there. I was definitely jealous. Um, but I do get, like, what John's saying in the sense of, like, just as much as, like, these gentlemen don't want someone being like, hey, brew this beer this way because that's what we want to drink. Like, yeah, you take those things into account, but at the end of the day, you're going to brew the beer that you inevitably want to brew. Uh, and, and the same thing for the chef. I mean, it's a matter of mutual respect. Um, and, and really, like you said, you know, you have the choice as to what restaurants you're doing it with. And that's kind of like where your control is. Like, okay, if this chef, you know, tends to, to make phenomenal cuisine or, or specializes in like, you know, let's say like American fare or like, you know, is, is a tra classically trained French chef, you kind of know like what dishes or like what wheelhouse that chef's going to work in. So, I mean, that absolutely makes sense. Um, because again, like you don't want too many cooks in the kitchen for lack of a better, like, you know, uh, cliche. Um, I unfortunately didn't have the opportunity to go. This bastard didn't even invite me. Uh, very inconsiderate of him. Sorry. But um, I know that we briefly touched on you guys opening a second facility in our previous interview. Maybe you can give us some insight as to where that is and, and what's going on there. Sure. So, yep, we're, uh, we're moving along in Peconic. Um, it's, uh, we're scheduled to come online with Making Beer by, uh, you know, sometime in the uh, end of July. Early, early August. John's touching my ass. I don't know why. Natural butt grab. It's uh, acceptable. Yeah. It's uh, it very gentle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love so that. we're, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, pretty phenomenal. We're really psyched. We're going to have a, uh, uh, we're hoping to have a uh, um, kind of a show place brewery location. We're then going to follow that as quickly as we can with our tasting room that's going to have a beer garden and ultimately a, beer, a brew pub by uh, uh, the end of the year. Um, we're going to be bottling at that location. We're uh, kind of to the point before, we're actually pretty excited because I think we're going to start bottling our other side, IPA, as soon as we can. Um, so in seven fifties or in six packs? You know, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, you know with the twelve ounce uh, bottle, uh, six packs, and then uh, you know we still because we'll be opening the larger kind of um, location that'll accommodate more volume in Peconic. It's going to allow us to kind of move Greenport, which we're keeping. We're not moving out of Greenport, but it's going to allow Greenport to become more of kind of a test kitchen for us and allow us to do more of those kind of limited one-off runs that would be, you know, whether we do something that's going to be a 750 or what have you. So, um, you know, all of that is kind of coming 
together so that by the end of the summer, we'll be online there. So, yeah, we're pretty psyched about that. That's awesome. Uh, that's definitely something we look forward to. Uh, it's nice to see, you know, specifically, you know, obviously the Blue Point, you know, brewery, we, we pretty much see everywhere. Um, but we see Spider Bite now doing some bottling, and, and it'll be great to see you guys there as well uh, with the Long Island based specifically breweries um, as you make, you know, make way west, westbound to Christian's territory because uh, you're the city guy, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Representing uh, Greenport in. The boroughs in general, or yeah, it's definitely in uh, the five boroughs. Uh, we have another. We have Justin, our other sales guy, does uh, the Long Island thing. So I just concentrate in Manhattan and you know try to get uh, partner, uh, you know, with these good restaurants and accounts and make sure that we get some good relationships going. People who understand what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve and say through our product. And it's it's it's, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. And uh, have you have you found like the their beers have been received? I mean, obviously being received extremely well out here. Um, there's a lot of distributors that I even go to personally making the rounds looking for limited stuff that's from out of state you know and i'll see like a, a significant amount of greenport taps like prison um how do you find that's been transitioning into the the boroughs and the manhattan area specifically well we find that we uh we really like to uh, partner with the people you know like, like i was saying before that you know understand it but we found that the best reception have been like honestly with the people who know what's going on the people that understand the industry and it's not just the people who are just trying to put everything up against the wall that's new because that's really popular is to just do what's new and exciting and everything like that but we we really strive to go to the places where it you know it's a it's a good concept and we're paired with food i mean you know going back to the beer dinner thing i think it's um something we really look to do is uh, make sure that our our product is represented with good quality food and it's in it's represented in a good atmosphere because everybody's just going to have a good time and that's you know that's what we want so. yeah absolutely um has there been a specific beer you've had the most success with in transitioning into that market um, the other the other side IPA has been really big for us. I think it may be because we kind of starved that market for a little while and didn't do uh, you know a, a consistent IPA. Everybody wanted us to, and then when we finally came out with it, I think it, it was the right decision on uh, these guys over here to you know choose that one. Or John, John is saying that it was he, my idea. Okay. <laughs> well, whoever. Regardless, everything has been Rich's idea so far. <laughs> it was a great decision, whoever's it, it, it was, because everybody was looking for that and they really wanted. Wanted that kind of accessible, uh, really good, you know, local IPA. So, and it's not to say it's not to say we're exclusive in that. There are a lot of good IPAs out there, but uh, that that has really been a big, uh, you know, a, a, a big mover for us. I'm not exaggerating when I say my wife talks about the other side IPA at least once a week. More she, than you. Yeah, she doesn't she doesn't get the opportunity to have it once a week, but she mentions wanting it at least once a week. <laughs> you're like you're like you turn around and she's like, no, the other side IPA, not your other side. <laughs> and, I mean, and an IPA is a great segue beer in general because, I mean, a lot of people, are, you know, automatically look for, they associate IPA with, like, hop-heavy beers and so on and so forth. But uh, it's a great beer category in general. It's probably the most known, like, you know, from a craft beer drink or even just people, like, introducing into that area um, where they'll have that beer and then maybe... Maybe come the fall, the Black Duck Porter will be on, and they'll be like, you know what? I'm going to have one of those because it's delicious, and you should always have one of those when it's available. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, to your earlier point, the, the bottling thing and where we are with bottling, I mean, we're really looking to make beer. Like, we make the beer that we want to make. Black Duck Porter that you mentioned, we make year-round from day one. Um, Porter is not a year-round beer usually. People in the summer kind of view a dark beer as being a little bit too much. They want something lighter. We don't look at beer that way. We look at beer through our own kind of, you know, goggles. So um, we, for that reason, make that beer year-round. We, you know, with the bottling thing, we could have entered packaging much earlier. We decided we want to control all of our brewing um, and not contract brew out and have our bottles done somewhere else. So that is a, a big reason why we're so late to market, you know, with our bottling is because we want people that when they try any of our beers to be able to say good or bad, that Greenport was, you know, on the, the uh, production side of, yeah, you're, of you're making that beer. Candidate. I mean, understandable. Yeah. I mean, you want to control that, and I respect that greatly. I mean, from a from a brand integrity standpoint, you know, like like you said, everything that you make, everything you're putting out, it, you have direct control over. You guys are, you know, calling the shots at the end of the day. Yeah, and I will say, too, that one of the things that we're really excited about is next year, uh, I'm committed and the brewery's committed to we're going to be actually making a 100% Long Island 
ingredient beer. So by next summer, we're actually going to be using malted barley grown on Long Island. We're going to be using hops grown on Long Island. We're going to actually bring, it'll be a one-off style, but it will be a Long Island grown beer, much to the idea of kind of like owning where we are and where we are is where what we want the beer to taste like and we want the beer to taste like the, the ground upon which it's grown and that to me is really important because Long Island is is growing in terms of a, a beer kind of centric place a craft beer place so it's next year there's gonna be a lot happening even more so than this year and next year, it's going to be a 100% Long Island beer that we're going to be brewing. I mean, the ability to even leverage local crops and, you know, local product in general is an amazing opportunity that not everyone can say, like, they can't say they can do that. Um, I mean, if you just even, like, stepping stepping out of this immediate conversation, if you, even, you look at Paul at Blind Bat, you know, he tends to use a lot of local ingredients, like local potatoes. Or, you know, he's a big stout guy. He's a, a Long Island potato stout today, a Saison, you know, sweet potatoes. Probably the sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Saison right now. Yeah. Delicious. Probably harvest it out of our own soil. And again, I actually read I actually read an article prior to even coming here today that, that said like it was actually in conjunction with, with wine specifically. But where you know soils, you know, directly affect you know the the product. So Long Island, you know, traditionally back in the day was a potato growing, you know, you know, island and it's there's great soil here in general. The wine business has boomed. So obviously the ability for the, the hops industry and like you said, the grain industry to really take off exists. So why would you not use local ingredients? So I mean, that's phenomenal, like really setting the benchmark of, you know, reaping the rewards of local growth and supporting local businesses in every facet from, from like, you know, from the ground up to, to finish product. So um, always a pleasure talking to you guys. And I must interrupt you, Mike, real quick. You guys have your three year anniversary coming up soon. Four year, four year. When may the four year anniversary party be? It's uh, generally the second weekend of July. Okay. So um, I'm not sure what the date is exactly, but it'll be just about the second Greg, weekend. I think Greg Martin from Long Island may be at the uh, fourth anniversary party. Do you guys edit this stuff? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck yourselves. <laughs> so we'll definitely be there. I have unfortunately never been. But I'm coming. Greg Martin's going to be there as drunk as he is now, if not more. And we look forward to that. Um, this isn't the, the drunk Greg Martin. This is the sober Greg Martin. This, this is actually this is. sober Greg yeah, Martin. Yeah, that, but, but listen, out of everybody, you know, listen, we cut our teeth with the guys from Greenport Harbor. So I don't even know what you were talking about when we came in. But we love these guys. We went to our first CBC, Boston, Massachusetts, 2009. These guys weren't open yet. We were just open. We got drunk on the ferry coming oh, yeah. back home, and we've been friends ever since. So it's all good for them. I thought Dan was going to kill me, but then I realized he's the nicest guy. Yeah, I don't want to be in a dark alley with Dan, but once you get to talk to him, you realize, I don't mind being in a dark alley with Dan. Dan You're like, I want that guy on my side. <laughs> Dan's a horse. He doesn't know how big he is. That's the problem. So as always, we really enjoy talking to the Greenport guys, the Long Island guys, and we look forward to doing it again in the near future. Until then, keep it clean. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Wash your balls. We're here with Bellport Dave from Dave's Bellport Cold Beer and Soda, um, our good friend and a frequent visitor on the Beer Amigos podcast. Um, Dave's got a bunch of stuff going on, so we're actually going to have him share it because it's not only cool as hell, but it's extremely important, near and dear to him. Um, first and foremost, Dave has a Founders um, Brewing Company tasting coming up, I believe, on the 27th of this month at 2 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. Dave, maybe you can provide us with some insight as to, as to what you'll be having, you know, what's going on there. And uh, we'll go from there. Well, when Founders comes to town, we make it kind of special. So um, we're going to be tapping a few different years' worth of the regular breakfast out. And have the Imperial Stout on tap, which is pretty much out of the market at this point. Um, we're getting an extra two cases of KBS, which will be a one bottle per person thing with the purchase of another founder's product. Um, and Tim's there, and Tim's one of the greatest beer hippies ever. Yeah. I love the guy. Do you know Tim? I've met him once. Once, yes. Yeah, he's yes. a great he's a great beer hippie. He's, he never goes over like 
30 decibels in his voice. He's like a stoner beer guy. I don't think I actually talked to him, but I did meet him, and he's very polite. I yeah, met yeah. him at, at Dave's last Founders Tasting last year, and uh, I just want to acknowledge the fact, I've actually was, was meaning to post it previously, and I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that Dave pretty much is uh, the man in the sense that he, he really facilitates people getting beer where... A lot of other distributors put stuff out early or it doesn't even, like, exist as far as they're concerned. So I just want to acknowledge that as much as we talk him up, it's, it's entirely genuine and, uh, and worth it. Because, like he said, he's going to have two cases of KBS there, um, where other places you pretty much had to, A, overpay entirely, or as far as you're concerned, when it was actually gone by the actual release date. So I just wanted to acknowledge Dave in this public forum known as the Beer Amigos. Um, so a great event nonetheless. Um, if you have the opportunity to make it out there, uh, please do it. Um, Dave is really great at holding stuff back in general. Um, during Craft Beer Week on Long Island, he tends to open up his safe, uh, his stash, if you will, and make things that have long been unavailable available to the masses. So... Um, and that's something to stay tuned on as well, because as that approaches in May, uh, I'm sure we'll have more information pertaining to that. That being said, um, Dave also organizes a charity event in Bellport. Um, Dave, if you could provide us with some insight as to what you'll have going on there and, uh, you know, the overall cause of that, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, well, first of all, I'll start with it's a charity event. And the charities are, number one is Camp Aquatic, which is a camp for handicapped kids. It's out in Santa Maria. Um, it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, I just love everything they do. The way they do it is phenomenal. Genuine people, people that love the kids. And um, it's an amazing experience for, for these kids who really, they don't have the opportunity to do these things like ride horses to, you know, just to be a regular kid. It's, 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 a, kind of, it's a kind of place where... They allow these kids to be as much regular kids as they can be, which is why I love the place. So they're my number one charity. My number two charity is um, the Lighthouse Mission, which is a food pantry in Bellport, run by this unbelievable guy called Pastor Jim, who gave up a multi-million dollar business to help people. And when it comes to religious leaders, there's a lot of cynicism and there's a lot of things I don't like, but this guy embodies everything I do like he just does everything for the people. He's all about the people and, uh, you know, spreading the word um, to help people. I mean, he's, he's a bit of a preachy guy, but that's what he does. He's a, it's, it's a mission, and he's a preacher. Uh, he's a pastor, rather. Um, but he does phenomenal work, and he really helps as many people as he can. Their outreach drives all over Suffolk County to help people. So they got my next check. And the third check goes, it's a much smaller check, goes for some high school scholarships, which I handpick the people, um, so it's people who can actually, yeah, it's getting loud here. People, yeah. that, people that can actually uh, use the, uh, the, the money, as opposed to some of the people who I've seen in the past, who get these scholarships, and their, their family name is on streets in the town. So pretty much that tells you they don't need the money. So that's why I handpick them. Um, you want to pause for a moment? Uh, no, let's keep going. So okay. when actually is the uh, Bellport Cold Beer and Soda charity event this year? It's on June 13th. It's Thursday night, June 13th, 6 to 10 p.m. Um, it's a great event. You guys have been there. It's probably one of the most cool, like, camaraderie events ever. Um, every, it's The brewers come out. They don't send representatives. And it's just this really kind of cool grassroots kind of thing. Um, and it's just this great, like, vibe. And it... I mean, I love the event, and the guys who come to the event love the event. The brewers love the event. Um, it raises money for good causes. We do raffles. It's beer, wine, and food, and it's Long Islanders for Long Islanders. All Long Island brews, all Long Island wines, and all Long Island eateries. Dave, and where can people buy tickets for that, or at least inquire into more information pertaining to that? All right, well, next week the tickets will be live online. Um, they can pick up tickets. There'll be a couple of uh, places. I'll announce who's got the tickets to get the hard tickets. Um, but you can go to the Facebook page, Bellport Cold Beer and Soda Facebook page. We'll have a link to everything. There's also a website, um, which is BellportCharityBeerEvent.com. So all that stuff's going to be up next week, and tickets will be live and available. And this year we're trying to 
get so many people to show up that we outgrow the venue. I think if you need some entertainment, Mike and I uh, might be available with our guitar. Just just putting that out there. You know what? We uh, we do musical. We've always had music. We've always had live music. Always local people. Always beer people. Um, hell yeah. Bring your shit, man. You know, the truth is... It, when, when when one guy gets off and another guy gets on, it gives the other guy time to drink beer. So yeah, you know, that'd be great. I, I I'd love to have you guys play there. That sounds like a good plan to me, huh, Mike? Absolutely. Always a pleasure talking to Dave from Dave's Bellport Cold Beer and Soda. Uh, make it out there for sure. Um, anything he has his hand in is with genuine, you know, genuine interest. Um, and Dave's the man. What can we say? <laughs> thank you so much, Dave. No, thank you guys because I love. The Beer Amigos! Woo! This is Sim with Capsule Arts Brew and hanging out with the Beer Amigos at the Blue Point Cast Festival! Yeah! That wraps up another episode of the Beer Amigos. Thanks for stopping by and listening. We appreciate it. We look forward to next year's Cascals Festival, and we'll catch you on the flip side. And as always, check out libeerevents.com for all your up-to-date information on Long Island Craft Beer Events. Don't forget that May 15th at Jackson's in Comac, the Long Island Craft Beer Pong Tournament hosted and refereed by the Beer Amigos will be taking place. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Until next time, adios, adios amigos. amigos. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are amigos. And that's why we call ourselves the Beer Amigos. Everybody. We are the Beer Amigos. We like beer. We are.